at? Let's just start with Liverpool, just down the road from where you are this morning. Um, any idea uh, about what has happened and particularly the, the hero cabbie that we're all talking about this morning? I think so. And, you know, I'd add to, to what you just said, Kay, that, you know, huge amount of thanks to um, the cab driver who appears to have acted very quickly. It's obviously too early to speculate, but to launch what looks like it may have been a terrorist attack, to do that on Remembrance Sunday, to do that in a great city like Liverpool, it's just, it's an appalling thing that may just have unfolded for us and, you know, just pay tribute to the bravery and the spirit of the people of Liverpool who, who've who stood up over and over again against adversity and thoughts with all of them this morning. Indeed so. Um, I wonder if I could ask you uh, where we are with uh, COVID this morning as far as the Labour Party is concerned. We're seeing what's happening in Europe, um, Austria, Germany, um, Netherlands. They've all got varying levels of restrictions in place. Do we need to take um, guidance from them? I think we need to take guidance from our own experts who've been saying for some time that we need to do a number of things. We need to introduce proper sick pay for people who have to self-isolate. We need to ventilate our buildings properly, particularly our schools. We've got some of the worst ventilated buildings in Europe. And as it gets harder to keep doors and windows open, we're seeing much more pressure on schools and rising COVID rates as well. And we need to put a rocket under the booster programme. We should be hitting about 500,000 boosters a day. We're only hitting about half of that at the moment. We should be bringing medics out of retirement, having many more pop-up clinics so that people can access the booster much more quickly and utilising community pharmacies as well. There's a lot the government could do, but there's just a feeling that yet again, they've taken their eye off the ball with the crisis that they've been engulfed in over recent weeks and just not use the time that they've had in order to stand us in the best possible stead as we approach Christmas. Uh, in all fairness, um, you know, we were at almost half a million booster jabs uh, yesterday, 446,000. So it's certainly heading in the right direction. One wonders, though, um, when that should be opened up to other age groups. I think it's just the over 55s at the moment. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the, the government is relying on the categories that the experts have put forward so that we move through those categories as quickly as possible. And the key is not to start mucking around with the categories, but just to get some speed into this process. You're right that yesterday was a particularly good day. I hope that that trend continues. But there's also the issue of young people as well and trying to make sure that young people get access to the vaccine too. I'm particularly worried about that. We're particularly worried about that because a lot of young people have missed a huge amount of school and um, more in some parts of the country than in others and that is going to have devastating implications for them if they can't catch up and if we've got young people out of school again for extended periods over over the winter there's going to be implications of that for decades and decades to come so we need the government to really get a grip on this really put a rocket under it and we we've been saying for a long time that we thought that mask wearing and social distancing should be part of plan a i think the government ought to be thinking very seriously about setting the, the right example and setting the right tone starting with the house of commons where it's still appalling the way that many tory mps are not wearing masks and social distancing at the moment mm. let's uh, turn to something very much on brief for you uh, what's happening on the poland belarus border uh, what on earth is going on there and what should we be doing about it well, look, actually, this is one of those rare occasions where I think the government is broadly right that the actions that Lukashenko is taking is appalling. He's using vulnerable refugees as pawns in a game. We recently imposed sanctions on Belarus. If Lukashenko isn't careful, I think he may well see a united front from Europe, Britain and the United States to impose further sanctions. And I certainly don't think we should rule that out. We've sent some troops across to try and support the Polish government. But the one great gap here is support for those refugees who are being used as a pawn in this political game. We've got to get more humanitarian support in to help them. The UNHCR is currently on the ground, but their efforts are very limited. It's emergency and crisis care at the moment. We've got reports of refugees, including children, freezing to death at the moment. We've got to make sure that we work with the international community to get help into them. We can't allow them to pay the price for what is a power play and a power game between authoritarian leaders and the European Union. 
Hearing from uh, the head of the armed forces, who's speaking to Trevor Phillips, actually, just yesterday, General Nick Carter, of course, warning that Belarus conflict could escalate to war and become weaponised. Um, how concerned should we be about that and, indeed, our role in that? Well, I think we should be very concerned about what's happening in Belarus and also what is happening in Ukraine. And I think we ought to be absolutely crystal clear to President Putin that the international community speaks with one voice. We will not tolerate states' territorial integrity, their sovereignty being threatened or undermined. We're leading members of NATO and we stand together with our NATO allies, allies when they're under threat. But it's in nobody's interest to see this escalate. So while I think Sir General Nick Carter is absolutely right to say that we should be concerned about this, the key for politicians is about how you de-escalate those tensions. And that means being firm and consistent in our approach to the Russian government and the Belarus authorities, but also being prepared to have a dialogue, being prepared to work with our international partners in order to make sure that this situation doesn't escalate and that we don't see further tensions in the next 24 hours. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about uh, Russian soldiers, 100,000 Russian soldiers, we believe, uh, near Ukraine's border as we speak. What does being firm with Russian, with Russia look like? Well, we've, we've been very clear as a country that we there will be uh, sanctions and financial penalties for Russia, for officials around President Putin um, and for the Belarusian government as well. Um, in fact, sanctions were imposed on Lukashenko just a few months ago with full support of all political parties in the House of Commons. But there's more that we could do, be, do to be tough on Russia. We've had the, a Russia report, a report that shows how London is still a haven for the dark money that helps to sustain the Putin regime. And the Prime Minister has been sitting on that for 18 months. A whole series of recommendations in there, not a single one of them implemented in full. For as long as this government isn't prepared to take tough action to make sure that the UK isn't a home for some of that dark money. The uh, the message that will be received loud and clear in Moscow is that the government will say one thing, but do quite another. We need to see some really tough and robust action from the government on that to show the UK leading by example. And we need to look to NATO to see what they can and will do, although others might say, given what happened uh, in Afghanistan and the withdrawal there, they're about as much use as a chocolate fire guard at the moment. Well, NATO isn't just some amorphous entity. We are NATO. We're part of NATO. We're leading members of NATO and contributors. And I think it's absolutely right that we reaffirm our commitment to stand with our allies when they're under threat and under attack. But I do think that the Foreign Secretary is correct in saying that although she wants to see a robust response from President Putin, she wants to see him intervene in order to prevent this sort of disgraceful behaviour that we're seeing from Lukashenko at the current time. It's not in anybody's interest to try to escalate those tensions, to try to rush headlong into some kind of standoff between troops on both sides of the border. We need to get humanitarian assistance to those who are in urgent and dire need. And it's right that we've sent some of our own troops over to support the Polish authorities as they grapple with this problem in real time on the ground. Mm. Um, Slee's being talked about in the House of Commons uh, today. Labour not without guilt when it comes to that. It's fair to say Keir Starmer stood on a manifesto in 2015 which promised to ban MPs from paid consultancies. He then took nine and a half grand um, from the government of Gibraltar just a few months later. You all need to look at yourselves. Look, I think I do look at myself all the time. I mean, you know, it's the sort of job where I don't think I've ever felt as accountable in any other walk of life. And I, I grapple with how I spend my time as an MP um, and I try to make sure that everything is sort of front and transparent as possible. And for, for me, that's the key. In the end, there are some of my constituents, for example, who won't really appreciate the fact that I've taken on this additional role as Shadow Foreign Secretary and the others, others that are very proud of that and think that it, it it helps to to ensure that I do a better job for them as the MP for Wigan. The key, surely, is that we are upfront and transparent about what we do, particularly when there's finances concerned and there's money changing hands, so that the public can make their own minds up about whether we're doing the right thing. And there's no suggestion at all that Keir Starmer didn't follow the rules. He did follow the rules and he declared um, that money. And that is the difference, I'm afraid, between him 
and Owen Paterson, who broke the rules and didn't declare many of those transactions, and the Prime Minister as well. We've just had revelations over the weekend about further revelations about the Jennifer Acuri affair. I don't care what the Prime Minister does in his personal life or with his free time, but I do care when those transactions, those relationships that may have a huge bearing on how public money is spent aren't upfront, open and transparent so that the public can make up their minds that's when the rock starts to set in and that's what we've got to change just before we let you go do you feel that um constituencies in your home constituency and and others are p taking up the uh, vaccine as quickly and the booster as quickly as they should be I think most people are absolutely desperate for it. Most of what I've got in my inbox at the moment about the vaccine rollout is from parents of teenagers and from uh, people who are waiting for their booster jab who are wanting to know when they can get it. So I think the vast majority of the public, actually, the challenge is how do we get it to them quickly enough but there are still people who are reluctant I understand that I've spent a bit of time with a few young people who had some concerns earlier in the month some of those concerns particularly for young women have centered around fertility I was able with the support of the the scientists who've been advising government to really reassure them about that and I guess the message that I would just send to people who are reluctant to get it is it is safe I've had it um, everybody I know has had it and it doesn't just protect you it protects your friends your family your loved ones and everyone else the only way we're going to come through this in the end is through people stepping forward and getting the vaccine don't listen to the idiots that are spreading nonsense in the anti-vax movement come forward get the vaccine um, and do your bit for the national effort okay good to talk to you as always thank you